Okay, uh, so my name is Lammert, and yeah, like Jeroen says, I'm going to talk about uh, Rx-driven development, and uh, I'm not going to talk too much about Rx itself. I assume pretty much everyone is kind of familiar with the concept of Rx, or who has no idea what Rx is? Okay, good. And who hasn't used it, or only like a little bit to play? Okay, so most people have kind of used it in apps, real apps. That's good, because then I don't need to cover that too much. And uh, another side question, kind of, has anyone ever used Redux? Yeah, because it's kind of in JavaScript. The idea of Redux is that you have one like big state model that you receive changes from. And that's kind of how uh, I've been building apps with Rx in iOS. So that's what my talk is going to be kind of about, about using such a model. So that basically means that uh, the data in our app, it's just one big tree of data. Uh, there are no like, short-lived things. All the data is just living in that tree of data, um, as you can see here. So the only thing that's not in there is like a UI state, like uh, if a button is pressed or uh, loading or error state. So let's say you load something from a server and we don't put the like loading state or error states in our data tree. And also, well, for security reasons, no secure credential that goes into the keychain. But all the other data that uh, basically you see on screen at any time in the app is all uh, stored in one big data tree. So what we built kind of underneath there are uh, our app models, or just model, like if you think of uh, MVC, uh, the model is like where your uh, business logic lives, uh, all kind of functions. So this has a reference to the root node of our data tree. And also, all the changes of the data can only be done through those uh, models. And then underneath there, uh, so yeah, I covered that. Underneath there, we have our view model. So we use everywhere in our view models. And those view models, they all, again, have a reference to like the root node of our app model, which has like the, the root node of the data. So that basically every view model has access to the entire data tree. So you might think that it makes a little bit things complicated, but uh, through Rx with like mapping, flat mapping and everything, you can quite easily get to the part of data that you need to present on a, any particular view. So the way it works is the, like let's say you want to modify some data so the view model calls a function on the, the model. That model it modifies the data in that tree. So the entire tree gets uh, updated. Then the, the root node of that tree basically uh, notifies the root app model that there has been a change in the data. Not exactly which data, but just that there has been a change in the data. And then uh, Rx kind of takes care of that uh, like whoever is subscribed to data that is actually changed gets updated in the view models. And that makes sure that the views are updated. So let me give a little example of that in a, an app. I'll, uh, let me see. I'll be using a little demo app for uh, some of the code. OK, let me just run the app. Shouldn't take too long. All right, so here is a, like a self-service screen, some all kind of data on it. And you see here a amount of 40 euro, and uh, that's being observed through a Rx observable. 
And then if I would change that amount in this screen, then you save it, which does the call to the model to actually uh, change that data. And then as you would expect here, the value also changes. Quite simple, but uh, those screens, they don't know about each other. Both are just observing the same part of uh, like the, the data and the tree. And well, by updating it in one place, all of them get notified of that. So let's go back to the presentation. So just a little bit about RxSwift. Uh, like at, at its base, you have observables. And observables is just a sequence over time that can either terminate normally or it can terminate with an error. But if you're actually uh, using observables for UI, it's better to use a, a driver. So a driver is actually part of RxCoco, which is part pretty much of uh, the Rx Swift, but then the, the Coco specific uh, things. So if you have a driver, uh, it cannot um, error out. So you cannot even like create code that uh, caches any error or anything. It just doesn't compile. And it's also always on the main thread. And it also replays the data. So that's why uh, I pretty much use everywhere in the entire app, wherever I need to display something uh, on the screen, I use drivers uh, instead of observables. And you also have signals, which are very similar, um, except they don't replay. So they are really more or less events. So for example, you have a button press that can be seen as a event, which is then like translated into a signal. So things happening over time. And drivers you can see more as like uh, a value like in the data. So everything from our data uh, becomes drivers and everything that you do in the UI basically becomes signals. Um, so if you look also in our view models, uh, in, this is a very, well, more or less simple example. All our view models are actually one single struct. So this is not just a example of a view model. This is actually our view model. Our entire app only uses one view model with uh, two uh, generics. One is the view model input and one is the view model output. And then we actually type alias uh, such a view model like you see below here, my view model that then specifies a uh, input and the output. And if you look at the output, uh, it only, since it's a struct, it's always a struct, it only contains drivers. So there's uh, like everything driving the UI. That's also why the title of my talk, uh, driven, Rx Driven Development. So the view model output drives everything that you see on the UI. And, oh, I think I accidentally pressed. And the input, it's actually, you don't call any function on the view model, but what we do is we create a enum that represents everything like uh, that you can do on the screen, all the, the what you would normally do functions. If you don't use view models, you could program it directly into the view controller, but we use uh, like an enum to do that. So if you then uh, look at our uh, view controller, how it's using that, it's quite simple. A view controller, uh, this one, it has a uh, title label and it has that, uh, it receives that view model. And then in the view did load, you see here, it just uh, from the output, it uh, observes the title there and then drives the title label uh, text. So then that means that whenever that thing changes, um, yeah, you get the change on the UI. And so the, the view model, what I'm not showing here is how does the view model get this data? And that's just through like the, the data tree that I showed you earlier. Uh, there's an observable on its root. 
and through like uh, observing that and then mapping and filtering and everything, you just yeah change the data so that you have exactly what you want to show on screen. And one important thing there is because uh, like any change anywhere in any data results like in the entire tree basically sending an update. So you don't want if you have a completely unrelated change somewhere that every like active screen in your entire app uh, gets refreshed. So for that reason, you'll want to use uh, distinct until changed so that the observables don't go off uh, when like its own data doesn't get changed. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, so let's talk about how it works with requests. Because often uh, when you have a, a view controller and you want to maybe load some data from uh, like your web server or application server, or whatever. Then you usually do a request. Uh, you get data back, and then you display the data on screen. So with the view model that I showed, that's not possible because you can only like uh, to your view model input send like the enum value, and you just get void back, and then you get the changes through uh, the observables. So through the model, uh, the view model just uh, makes a request basically, or it asks for uh, the model to fire a request. And then also that uh, model asynchronously will update the data, and then the view model will receive uh, that change. One thing uh, we do here is that uh, the call from the view model to the model, it will receive back whether it's uh, loading or if it's uh, erroring out. So that, um, because I, what I mentioned earlier, that doesn't get saved to the, to the app data. So it does listen to that, because it's like short-lived uh, state kind of. And then it uh, can show like a loader or error message or whatever on the screen. Um, of course, you, we also want to persist the data somewhere. That's kind of the nice thing about it, because if you persist this entire thing and you just launch the app again, then you have all the data again for every screen and everything just kind of works. So we persist this entire uh, tree at once. We write it to JSON, and that works very similar, actually, because we also just observe the tree. The entire tree is basically uh, codable. Uh, you, you can make, we do it in a slightly different way because uh, all of this is actually written in Kotlin, which is used by our Android app and iOS app. But you could make the entire tree codable and then just simply write it to JSON. And let me show you a little example of that. So here, um, let me see where the amount. So we had the amount here, 53. If I search for 53, so you see here the current advance amount, 53. And of course, when I change it, then it uh, becomes 62 immediately. And it's quite easy to uh, have everything here. But what would be even nicer if, if I would change it here and save it, that it would also change in my UI which it, exactly it does. So that's actually one of the best parts of it. So we also, uh, through a NS file coordinator, we listen to any changes of the JSON, and then uh, that will update the UI. And that's actually quite powerful. Uh, let me show you an other example. Uh, like here, invoices. So let's say we remove here an invoice. And well, I think that's one that's not visible right now. That's actually crashing. Oh, well. That's probably just that view then that doesn't work well. But you kind of get the idea. Any data that you change uh, through the, all the drivers, it will update the, the UI. Let me see if I can change one more thing. I think this one is one that's open. No, I 
Just keep scratching. Bad view. Uh, let me continue then. Uh, yeah, so this is nice if you are working on a MacBook and you can just uh, edit all the data here. But uh, let's say you have the app from Test Flight, you maybe also want to change something. So for that, I uh, actually built a uh, JSON editor here. So I can just edit the, the data right here when I'm like on my way and everything to uh, see any changes. It is a little bit hard to find anything. <laughs> Could use uh, like a search function or something, but uh, like if your model is small, or you could even split your data into multiple files or something, then it's really nice just to change it and uh, to see those uh, changes as well. And uh, we actually took it one step further. Because if I uh, change something here, so this value was 66 right now. Just let me prove that it actually works. Let's see. It's a little bit hard to find anything. Uh, yeah, so here's the 66. Keyboard is not. So, yeah. So, let's make it 69. Save it. Then we see 69. So, but what I did is also, like, I made another copy of the entire app, which is using pretty much the same source code, uh, so that you can also do it uh, at the same. Because uh, these two apps, they're using the same, uh, like, group ID of the bundle. So everything is uh, written to like the shared uh, containers, so they can actually see each other's data. So if you go to this uh, editor here and go to this data, let me see. So here we have the amount ten. So if I save it here, then it also changes here. So that way you can just have like any change here and even have stuff animating in a live way, like remove entire table cells, any change, uh, and it will be there. And that also has some other advantages, uh, and that's mainly for testing. Um, one thing I should say, like imagine you have a view here, like invoices. Uh, right now I have all this data in my file and uh, I kind of want to keep it that way because if I make a change, I don't want to undo that change. But if I open this view, then it will actually get new data from the web and uh, write the data to my app model and then display those changes. So that's why actually we have uh, different modes. And one of them is offline. So what that means is that um, any call that you would normally do to, the, to your server is now just not doing anything. It's just giving back success. And it works really nicely because like all of the, the view model calls to our model, uh, they don't get data back anyway. Because uh, normally if you try to mock something, uh, a successful call uh, from your app, you actually need to give it data back. But in this case, we just give it back that it succeeded without giving it data back. We keep the data the same. So in that way, uh, all the data in here will never change and you will never see an error message or anything like that. Everything just succeeds automatically. And uh, with that, 
it's actually nice to do uh, some screenshot testing or snapshot testing. Like uh, maybe some of you are using like Fastlane uh, to do snapshot testing for uh, like your App Store uh, images. Who's using that? Okay, a couple. So what you can do here is, uh, let me try to find a place. Uh, I'm over here. So what we're doing is we actually uh, prepare these uh, JSON files, and then we just create uh, simple uh, UI tests, and we specify which data to use so that the entire app is gonna be immediately in the desired state, and you can easily switch between things. And we can also just uh, specify it, uh, and that's actually how it's done from the test as well. So you specify here a data file, with the data that you want to display. So let me just run that first. So yeah, it should be, still be on my desktop. There it is. So here the amount is 10, and now the app that I was running before here, all the data just gets overridden, and now it shows here 10. So you just, uh, also with colleagues and everything, you can just share these uh, data sets easily and then recreate a state that some user was in. You can actually even uh, share it here with uh, AirDrop, for example, to another device or to your MacBook. And like I said, in the snapshot testing, so what it's doing here, it's actually um, setting uh, in the snapshot test this uh, data file to that data file. And it's, we also create a deep linking mechanism so we can just go to any screen inside uh, the entire app. And then, uh, well, normally we run this with Fastlane, but that's gonna take like half an hour or so. So I'm not gonna do that, but I can quickly, hopefully, show that it kind of works. So that's, I think, just the home screen. So we're not actually using any of Apple's UI uh, testing for this to press buttons and everything. We just use like our own deep linking mechanism just to go to any screen that we want to. That's why these are basically just two lines of code to create any snapshot from any screen basically in our app with any state. And it's also doing it in the offline mode so you don't uh, need to call any service or, or whatever. And uh, well, I already covered those last ones. So that's it, are there any questions? Yeah. No. Yeah, so uh, we do throttle right into the file every 10 seconds. So we only do that once every 10 seconds. But we haven't had problems with that yet. If we will run into problems, then we can split it. But uh, yeah, we want to keep it as simple as possible. So if this works, it's fine. If it doesn't, then uh, we split it. Sorry? Easier yeah. Yeah. Because like all our, uh, well, you could just make your entire app data like structs, enums, make everything codable and it will just work. Mm -hmm. So we have everything in Kotlin, everything is just a data class there. 
and then. Uh, so every time you, stop, you say something, you reload the file. Oh, yeah. oh, no, you use the observ or observable on file system, so you get a notification when someone changes it, and you read, but then you read the whole data structure. In. Yeah, but if we write to it our shell, we don't uh, reload it. That makes sense. <laughs> Okay, any other questions? Yes, uh, how do you do navigation between screens in the set uh, It's all coordinators, uh, which is kind of separate from this. Well, it's also coordinators that are using uh, Rx very heavily uh, everywhere. So it's basically routers coordinators that use uh, like a lot of signals to uh, transition between screens. And also, yeah, the, the view model creation and everything lives there. So every view model is just uh, separate. Uh, they don't know anything about each other. And they, like, even to open another screen, uh, what happens is basically the view controller tells the, the view model, like, that the button has tapped. And then through uh, a signal there, it goes back through the coordinator. And then the coordinator informs the router that something needs to happen. So it's, uh, it's a little bit too complicated to <laughs> explain it all now. That's yeah, actually something I made that I want to maybe talk about uh, in a future talk. This is a whole framework I kind of built. Action? Uh, yeah. uh, from your point of view, what would be the, the, the biggest disadvantage of this architecture compared to other setups? Uh, it's. Uh, maybe has a little bit of a steep learning curve, uh, like, like especially with what I just said with all the coordinators and everything. And RX, uh, well, it it should make things in certain cases easier and more straightforward. But you can also do complex things with it, of course. So yeah, I think the complexity, but uh, it does make everything very consistent, which kind of makes it easier again. I haven't. Mm, no, it's it kind of makes it easier, like with just making change to the files and everything to see like what happens and different states and the debugging. Yeah, that's just the part of Rx where you can make an observable and put debug on it to see the values that are streaming through. So with the rest, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty fine. I haven't really had or seen any disadvantages. Yeah. Can, you, can you show the slide with the data, with the app data model and the data model and the model of the model? Uh, so which one is that? The top one, I think. Yeah. This one. Uh, so for me, what's the difference between the app model and the app data? Because you might, I always think yeah, the model. Yeah, so the app data also contains the state of the application. The app data is really just the JSON that you saw, uh, nothing else. Uh, okay. And because it's a tree, uh, like JSON is a tree. And the app model does the mo modifications. Uh, so the app model is internal in the app, and the app data yeah. is... Oh, okay, so and it's it really, like, it, it also, the, the model can kind of, like, do calculations on the app data. Uh, but it's really meant more for, uh, like, any modification needs to be done there. Because the, the view models, they don't have access to change uh, any of the app data. So you just call a function which does something, Signals. yeah, and it's all void, like through that input uh, enum that you saw earlier. It's just you you tell it to do something, something happens, and you like get the the notification through the observables yeah, back yeah, yeah. if you want it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's naming, storage. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.